steeped in history and used across many locations since ancient times. The bow. It emerged in Japan as a hunting tool in the Yongon era. Its role has changed over the generations to a treasure used in religious ceremonies and to a weapon of war. With the advent of firearms and technology, one of these roles is at an end, but now it is used in a martial art to temper mind and body. This means of training heart, technique, and strength. Via the bow has developed into the modern art of Kudo Japanese archery. Bows were made from natural materials like bamboo, but in modern times, cheap bows made with synthetic materials are common, and few craftsmen make traditional bamboo bows. Craftsmen that make bows are called bows. Here is a young bowyer, Munahiro Sibata. Munahiro lives in Koto, the origin of many traditions of Japanese culture, and works at the Sibata Kanyuro Bow Shop. The origin of the Kuo-Ulmi Bow, Koto Bow, is in the Sengoku period, in 1534, the year that General Oda Nobunaga was born, where it was created by the Boya Kanyuro Sibata. It has also been said that, when he was attacked at Honoi Temple by Akechi Mitsuhide's forces, the bow Nobunaga raised against them was one of Sibata's. The Sibata family has a 500-year history of passing down Kuaumi techniques and traditions. Munahiro's mentor and father is the 21st Kanyuro Sibata. Thus the bows are highly valued, of course as tools in archery, but also for their quality as cultural artifacts. Munahiro has been watching his father since infancy, aware that he too would become a bowler in the future, and officially became Kanyuro's pupil when he turned 23. ま、this long tradition, putting his strength into facing this incalculable pressure, Munehiro moves forward. Japanese bows known as waku are seven saku and three sun in total length, over two meters, making them the largest bows in the world. They are divided into four main categories, the satsuma bow, kuo ulmi, isu bow, and edo bow. The slender, and physically beautiful, Kuaomi fetches high prices. Mudana Toko Sogioto Ste, a party Ugani, Chikarazuku, Tsuko to Suruto, a party, Koyufuna, Kachana Kanji, Mania Gedomo. Isa Tinito Tetskatimito, Tegoite. Kachitono Kacha de Chikarazio Dake Nitono Atskai Nikinoa, Atskai Nikinis. Waku, while composed simply of a bow and bowstring, are difficult to hit targets with if picked up without experience. The use of a kuaumi is even more challenging, but the joy of mastering it is difficult to match, and enthusiasts recognize the superiority of sea batter's bows. The main material in Kuaumi is madake, timber bamboo. It is laid to dry for long periods of time, to harden. The harsh summers and winters of Kuoto lead the bamboo fibers to be dense, hard and resilient, perfect for use in bows. This bamboo will be reborn into bows with unique shapes and great repulsive force. Daitai 
もう見る目が違うんで With his father as teacher Munahiro learns the techniques of bow making So he may one day take over A bow may appear to be one single piece But on closer inspection you can see it is composed of several materials A middle section is sandwiched between two outer layers On both sides is wood from the incredibly flexible wax tree, vital to the bow. Beside, it is charred bamboo, both light and strong. In the center is a collection of various woods other than bamboo. It is not just from bamboo, but a collection of many other materials that a bow is composed. First, Just the inward facing side is warmed up. Heating and hardening it up strengthens the bamboo. The other side must remain flexible and stretchy so it isn't heated. Once the materials are prepared, both sides are shaved. It is here that the bow must be adjusted to the correct thickness to make it strong. Strength comes from pulling on a bow and is determined by the width and thickness of the interior and bamboo together. Just one millimeter off is said to cause the bow to lose five kilos of force. Thus, it must be checked for correctness. He shaves carefully while checking the thickness together. It is now at the proper thickness. It is now that he gives life to the bow. A bow's unique shape is composed of five main curves without a single straight line it is from the various strong and weak points of flexibility in balance that a bow derives its function this complex the intricate shape is derived by the bow's hand what is about to occur now is the bow binding which gives the bamboo its curves It is here where a bowyer's skill is said to be best on display. But just how are these curves added? While pasting the three layers together, the bow binding begins. Things grow tense in the workshop. Planks are attached to where the bowstring will be tied to prevent damage as hemp rope is wrapped at regular intervals. At his side, the master waits for his chance. In his hand, a wedge is made of bamboo. With Munahiro now finished wrapping, the master springs into action. Soon he will show the bowyer techniques that have continued for 21 generations. They wrap the bamboo in hemp rope, then insert it in wedges. He pounds them into cores warping. The shape must be created before the super glue dries, leaving them only 15 minutes. With only moments to decide, he inserts over 100 wedges and then applies his strength. The master skillfully bends the bow within this limited time.
Munehiro continues afterward, trying with his own hands to mimic the master's technique. The master oversees the procedure. There is no room for mistakes, nor room for hesitation. All five curves must be in perfect harmony. He must put all of his strength into this limited time frame. The master and apprentice's bows are lined up. Their shapes, with countless wedges inserted, look quite like dragons. How does Munehiro feel about his work? こっちから見たら食いがこっちもいたりこっちもいたりあっちもいたりこっちもいたり本当はまっすぐ揃ってるまっすぐ揃ってる方が綺麗ねあもうひねってくるねそれでさっきまっすぐ打つ出へんからど
He's careful of the bow's bend as he attaches the bowstring. He carefully removes it from the stretching rack. He must not lose focus. The bow is still trying to bend back, so without listening, he uses his foot to try and fix the bow's shape. The master himself makes adjustments. Finally, he does some himself. Relieved of his stress, he starts speaking. Recognizing one's mistakes is a big step. And now Munahiro shows his stunning bow made with the master's help. The bow is used for a few months, thousands of arrows shot, to stabilize its shape. At last, the day of completion arrives. The bow's role has changed, but it continues to remain important. Alongside the Bowyer craftsman name, that continues to be passed down. Munahiro pulls tight on the bowstring, and just like a piercing arrow, with the support and belief of his family. He opens the door to tomorrow and takes another step towards his dream.